once again welcome to this class uh, on Linux basics um, this is the ongoing uh, series um, the um, this is the class on uh, Linux and all the programming languages uh, today is our fourth uh, session um, we will be continuing our discussion on the Linux um, we started uh, talking about uh, the basics as is, as of uh, the kernel the file system and then the shell then we went into more details about the commands and then last week we saw or the last, in the last lecture we saw um, the commands how to um, do some uh, managing the file access managing system resources and managing uh, the general um, disk usage or disk resources. Um, to be specific we saw the commands like change mode um, to um, modify the file permissions um, we had the different uh, sections uh, in the um, in the file uh, um, file permission list uh, the first one is for the user the second one is for the group and then the third one is for everyone else um, we saw how to set these access uh, codes um, it is actually like a binary uh, number uh, so it, uh, it is basically it is a read write and execute so um, for each of these things so the maximum that you can allocate a number is uh, 7 which is um, because the read write execute each one is represented by 1 bit so if all of them are on that is 111 which stands for the decimal number 7. So you can say like 777 that means that it is a read write execute for all the groups and then based on how where you make the bit as 0 then you can control the access for example if you want just a, uh, you want all the read write execute access so you make yourself 7 and then if the group just wants to read and uh, execute then you make it as um, 101 which is 5. And then for all of them, if you just want them to just read, then you make it as 100, um, which goes to 4. Um, so like like that, you can control so 754 or any combination of that uh, you can use to control the access. Then you also uh, we saw the how to change the ownership of a given file from yourself to some other owner, some other user. And then you can also use the change group to uh, change the group permissions itself or the group itself of the given file. Um, this comes in handy because uh, when we look at like um, various um, real life situations, um, um, a particular file access may be restricted because of uh, certain groups or particular directory can be accessed only by certain groups. And uh, you may have permission, but you don't know like in which group you belong to. And you you may have like permissions of multiple groups, and uh, you want to make sure that that particular file corresponds to at least that one group, which uh, will enable you to do more stuff. Um, we also saw like how to manage the system resources. Um, um, in particular, we saw some of the definitions of the processes. How do we what we call process in uh, Linux, and how Linux assigns a process ID for each of the processes and then uh, we also saw how to uh, report those processes using the ps command or the top command and then uh, we also saw how to kill a particular process by using the kill and in which uh, we also saw like the various priorities where um, the interrupt can be as high as minus 9 which means that instant kill of that uh, process. Um, we also uh, saw some um, commands related to the resources the the, the disk usage uh, in particular we saw like du command uh, the du uh, with various options um, and um, which actually enabled us to get how much uh, disk space is remaining um, and then um, um, we also like um, we saw the df command which is uh, essentially um, again another way of uh, um, the estimating the usage here the df reports on a particular file system 
as to the mount point and basically how much memory is available. Then we also saw the command box free to also understand that um, how um, how much memory is uh, remaining basically. Um, we also use some other commands. Um, I think uh, we did the, the to kind of the, the map analogy there. We want to find out like which uh, who 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 is the user. So there are there's the who command which uh, gives you all the users in the system or who am I will give you uh, specific to which uh, user name that you are using to access the system. Um, So today we will be uh, looking at uh, some more um, comments. Uh, um, and before we start about uh, today's lecture, I want to assign you some more activities, uh, just uh, like what we did in the last lecture. Um, today I want you to use man uh, command to find more details on the top. Top is the other command that we studied in the last uh, lecture to get more details on top and then page only. Um, Find out and uh, see like what are the options, what are the arguments, how to use it in more detail. Um, especially the top will be uh, very widely used command to see in the dynamic way as to what is happening um, with all the processes in the system. And so, um, particular interest is uh, how do you fill within the top, and also how do you exit out of the top. Those kind of things become very useful. Um, then use the ps command to find all the processes that are running and uh, use the kill command to stop um, also use stop to find the processes running um, and then uh, use the a command use at least one command to stop the process from the top top command itself so these are just fun activities that uh, you can do uh, fairly easily um, so in today's topic um, we will be dealing with more um, in depth uh, file system commands um, we will specifically talk about grep f grep locate unique sort touch find there are other commands like diff and t um, i have kind of grouped them here and we will see why uh, have group pieces and also like some of the commands that uh, we um, that are also like uh, other commonly used commands like link how to link a file. Uh, the linking is a very um, easy way of actually um, 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 accessing a file um, without actually um, copying the file and inferring what on long time as well as uh, large memory. So let us uh, start um, let us start with these commands um, the first command that we will talk about is uh, f grep um, or grep the, the grep command is mainly used to search a keyword inside a file. So the keyword is specified as a, a string and uh, the grep provides a lot of options from Essentially, for um, doing various things. Um, so here, some options are given, which is uh, dash i for ignore case, dash v for the lines which don't match. Uh, so basically, it excludes the lines that match, and uh, it gives you only the lines that don't match from a file. And then uh, it also you can say like um, dash n, and uh, with following. Um, um, n you can specify some number so that uh, the command actually displays the lines where it found the match and then after that the n number of lines which is specified here um, in that file. So these are like very powerful and useful commands so um, typically we try to get uh, use the grep to find a particular keyword whether that is there in the file and then uh, once uh, we find it then we can do all kinds of operations on those uh, keywords and then we can um, use it in other programs um, even the um, the string that uh, we specify for matching that you can specify it as a regular expression um, 
again uh, you can actually go into um, the man grep or man air grep to get more information about this command itself. Uh, there are also like other nifty features like dash l which uh, only shows all the files where the keyword is present it does not output the exactly the line itself. So these are all like uh, some nifty things that um, you can do to gather information. So again these are all like the information getting commands they, they themselves do not modify the file or do anything. Um, one of the features um, that we talked about earlier was this multitasking. So even within a window you can do multitasking which is essentially um, we saw this pipe command where we can pipe a command uh, output of a command into another command. So similarly you can use grep command in that fashion for example if you want to search multiple keywords and you want to see like I mean which file all the particular keywords are present. So you can actually um, grep one keyword at a time and then pipe those outputs into the, the subsequent commands subsequent command. so it will be like grep a from star dot txt pipe to grep b pipe to grep c pipe to grep d so now the output of that this entire command will be one file which contains all a b c and d so so it is again a very useful command and then you can you can put it in multiple orders and uh, it can give you some exercises later on to see how the knowledge of the um, The other command that we will talk about is the find, um, the find command is again used for to find particular file in a hard drive. So this is like mostly like a you know, file name rather than using uh, really a grep which is more like a keyword. So um, using this one you can um, find files by date and we can specify also the range of times when it was modified. Um, so here there is an example uh, find slash user slash bin type is f and then uh, the dash a time. Uh, plus hundred and dash print. So so then uh, you can actually like get this, uh, this particular uh, files uh, using the find command. You can also use find to show the postscript files in our directory. Um, and then one example is like find star dot pearl. Uh, here you can see all the, the commands that end in dot pearl. Um, so again, the syntax follows the general syntax of um, the uh, any Linux command only thing is here the directory is also an argument which is uh, essentially like find and then the argument and then the options and then followed by what is the action for example here the action is to print that uh, all the files that were, that, was, that were found in the example command shown here. So here um, there is more stuff basically so if you just uh, do not specify anything it assumes that it is actually the current directory. So find star pearl will give you list all the, the PL extended files this is same as you can say think of right now as just ls star pearl that also gives the same of it. Um, so the find is also like used when uh, the particular directory is uh, or particular file is embedded in multiple levels of hierarchy and somewhere below uh, the hierarchy is where this file is then you can use uh, find to uh, actually like uh, find the file. The other command is locate, uh, locate is, is much faster than the find command so that is the reason why you choose to use locate instead of find. Um, so the, the again the, the Files are printed with the path if you use the command. So the syntax is just the locate and then the search string. So it finds the file and then it prints the whole path where exactly the file is located uh, for that string. So here is an example again locate star pearl. Um, it gives you like the entire path um, and then followed by the where it is. And then it, it goes under all the all the directories so from the current directory it goes under 
each hierarchy and then finds if that particular file exists in those hierarchies and then prints all the uh, the entire path. Um, uh, actually, like I, I just wanted to restate even the previous one, the, the find also is the, does exactly the same thing. So even though it doesn't print out the um, the path name. This set of files is not just limited to the current directory. It's actually from current directory onwards, it goes all the way under and then finds the files. So that's the principal difference between the ls command and the find command. Uh, whereas ls only restricts to the particular hierarchy that you give. For example, if you just say ls star perl, it only finds all the perl files in the current directory. If you do ls um, dot slash Blah blah slash star pearl. It only goes under one directory below and then look for the, the, the particular files. Whereas find searches across all the entire tree that is uh, under that particular directory and gives you all the, the matches. So this is a principal distinction. Again, the locate is also the same thing. And then the, the other command that we will learn is uh, wc. Um, it is not water closet by the way, so it actually stands for um, word count. So, here the key thing is um, you can actually determine how many lines are there in a file uh, using this uh, WC command, even though it is the word actually uh, it, give, it can give you the number of lines, the words, the number of characters, all of them. Um, so, again, there are multiple options. Dash L gives you the, the lines, and uh, if you just specify WC without any options, and then the file name, it gives you all three. It gives you the number of lines as the first uh, column, number of words as the second column, and number of characters as the third column. Then you can specifically go there, go ahead and ask WC minus L file name that gives you the number of lines. WC minus W the file name gives you the number of words. Again, the words means um, the the the, the non-white space uh, characters, group of characters separated by a white space character or a new line. So um, those are the words. That's the definition of word. And so um, that collection will be treated as a word, and then you just output the number of words. And then the WC minus C, the file name, will give you the number of characters. Here, the number of characters typically is the uh, non white space characters, so all the white space characters are uh, not reported. So, here are, here are some examples. Um, so, here is a default one WC test color that we gives you the five lines, eight characters, uh, eight, eight words, 93 characters, and then here um, you can also see like um, somebody is piping the ls command into wc minus l so then uh, it gives you the since it is ls basically like it, it it gives you how many lines are there in the in this output of the ls command so again as i said like when you use the pipe the commands output gets piped to the particular command so in this one you can Think that uh, basically there are 68 files in that uh, in this directory. You know, like the regular ls actually gives um, the files multiple files in the same line. When you pipe the ls to the wc minus l, it it gives each file as one line. So that's why like you get like the actual number of files which is 68. So the next command that we will learn is a sort. Um, a sort command is uh, used to sort the files uh, in the alphabetical order. Uh, so a sort file name, uh, sort, and then the file name just takes all the lines and basically like uh, sees uh, which line to be coming first in an alphabetical order, and then it presents that way. Uh, for example, in this. Uh, Okay, is Linux one dot x you have C C plus plus dot net Eclipse Java so you can see that actually like it's C D E F G like it just goes in the alphabetical order and reports this uh, file. 
so inside the content may be in any other order but uh, when you do a sort it sorts it immediately into alphabetical order so again this is another useful command if you are collecting some data and then the data is all in some form and you want to present it in a much better form so you can use this command to uh, present it in an alphabetical order So now let's uh, move on. This command unique. Um, this command prints out the file, uh, removing all the duplicate adjacent lines. So um, again, you can say unique unique file name. It gives you all the lines that are appearing only once. And then uh, there are options to it. Um, so, for example, unique minus u, the file name uh, dash dash unique prints all the unique lines. And then, if you say like repeat it with uh, dash d option, it only prints out the what are the duplicated lines. So, again, this command is used uh, in many ways, basically, which is uh, very useful. Um, if you have a particular file name which uh, you copy it from multiple sources and you don't know whether something is uh, repeated many times, one way to find out is uh, just use this uh, unique command. Um, you can also say like dash c uh, file name which uh, gives you the, the number of um, uh, times a particular uh, line has occurred. So. Uh, for the unique lines it prints out one and then uh, for the other lines it prints out uh, how many other times uh, that particular um, line has been occurring inside that uh, file. So let us look at some examples here um, we create the test uh, we create this one you can see that actually uh, Dravid, Dravid is repeated uh, Sachin is actually repeated but in a different uh, location and Ganguly is repeated twice. Kumble is only uh, once. So if you just give like just uh, unique uh, text, um, now it gives you the Sachin twice, but uh, Dravid and Ganguly are reported only once. So that they are unique. So one way to eliminate these kind of uh, situation is to use the sort. So when you do a sort, the Sachin and Sachin whichever position actually like when they just gang together so in this case it will be Dravid, Kumble or Dravid, Gangli, Kumble and then Sachin, Sachin so now if you say like sort the text and then pass that to the unique command then you get really just the unique values because the two Sachins are coming now together and that gets eliminated by the And then you can say like unique minus u the text, then it gives you like such in such in and Kumble. So this is the uh, this show illustrates how the unique command is getting used. Um, actually, this is uh, an error. Probably. The unique minus u is actually it only prints out the unique lines. In this case, like if you have um, if you have sorted this way, then uh, it will print out the. Oh, actually, like because the the text is still the, this one, so that's why Sachin is printed twice because it thinks it's still they are unique because they appear in different lines. The entire Dravid is gone, and then the Gangli is gone because uh, they are uh, repeated. So that's why the unique minus U and then the file name gives uh, two Sachin and one Kumbh. So now let's go to the next one, um, which is Touch. Touch is a way to create empty file. Um, so when you say like touch and then the file name 
uh, uh, an empty file with that file name it will be created it will have a size of 0 bytes um, if it does not exist if that particular file exists then it updates the timestamp so that it, it appears as if like that file was updated just recently okay so again this is useful in the sense that some some um, particular commands uh, that we may work on will not run um, if the file is uh, not updated to the latest time timestamps or you may have a requirement that this particular file needs to be updated much later than another particular file. So and the, but the, the that file may be created later than this, uh, the file that you want to access. So in that uh, sense, you can just do a patch and then the file name, which updates the timestamp, and then you can do whatever processing that you want to. So here, um, as an example. We want to change the access time of file six to ten ten in May. So here we can actually give a particular date, and then we can say like touch. So touch minus D second May, and then followed by the time, and then it will change the timestamp to that particular time. So you can use an ls minus l to verify whether the timestamp change has happened. So another way to do it is uh, dash t touch dash t the touch dash t takes uh, an expression uh, which is month followed by day followed by uh, hour followed by minutes. So it is shown here like month month day day hour hour minute once you specify this form, format it actually updates the timestamp to that particular format uh, that particular time. So that uh, that's another way to change the either dash t with uh, the date inside the quotation, or just specify dash t and then as a string you can just specify the whole date, and then it updates to that one. Um, typically, we don't use with any options. We can just say touch and then the file name. Then it puts the the latest timestamp into that one. So it just gets the Timestamp from the date command, and then uh, it puts that particular date uh, for that file, so that uh, it appears as if it is not modified. And then, if it is uh, not there, then uh, as I said, uh, it produces a file with zero bytes. So here are again some more examples. Um, So when we say like patch and then we see the what is the disk usage for that particular file it reports 0 bytes and if you do an ls minus l it will still report the 0 bytes as the latest timestamp and then we say okay now we want to change the timestamp and then we provide this timestamp and then when we say like ls minus l text we see an older timestamp. So again you can advance the date uh, or move it forward. Um, you cannot move it forward more than the system date itself, so that is another thing that we want to make sure. So, here it is also like we use the dash T option to change the date on that particular file and it changes consistently. So, as I mentioned earlier, um, there are um, Few commands to actually alter the programming behavior um, or managing the system resources. One thing that we saw was the pipe command. Then we also saw like how the processes can be uh, called in. Um, the other command is what is called the T. The T command actually uh, sends an output of a program, or in our case, it's a process. Output of a process to two different directions. In the, at the same time, so you can specify T and then file name uh, with options, and then um, it can actually send it to two different locations. So, what are the two locations? Here, one is it stores into the particular file. So, here we have an example ls minus l, type T file name, file 2. 
So now let's see, like I mean, how this works. So ls minus l generates an output, which is uh, the list of all the files, uh, all the details inside the directory, um, and then that is actually piped to t and then file two. So when it is piped, actually it is actually going to the output um, file. Uh, in our case, it's the terminal where it displays what is the output of that ls minus l command. But we say that we also do a t to file two. That means that it actually um, writes out the same information into file two as well. And uh, dash t minus a is an option to append to a particular file, the same as uh, the double arrow. When we say double arrow, it only like does uh, just that portion of it, just writing the, the uh, file, writing into file. Whereas the t will write into the file and also output into the terminal. So let's see an example. So in this example, um, we initially we store the output of ls minus l using an greater than arrow into list one. Now the second command is uh, interesting where we did the same ls minus l but now we pipe to t list 2. So now let us see what, what is output. So when you do the ls minus l it is actually there are all these four zero size files file 1, file 2, file 3, file 4 and then there is uh, some finite amount of um, size which is uh, list 1. So now what will happen when we do the um, list 2 so so one thing is not to notice is when we specify this ls minus l 5 to tl list 2 it displays the output of the ls command in the terminal which is you can see like the four um, zero of size files and then the list one which we created earlier which is ls one so uh, sent to the list one but now you see that basically um, it produces this output at the output terminal but also now it, it writes this information into another file called list two and that list two is not shown here because at the time of keying basically there are two parallel processes so the list two was still getting updated so it doesn't even know that that Particular file existed at that point, so the ls minus l produces the normal output. Now the next command is uh, the t with dash a, which means that we want to append the list two with the same ls minus l command. So now if you look at it. Now the list two command list two is uh, shown, and pretty much you can see that actually the um, they have like similar type of uh, numbers number of bytes. So again, you can see that actually um, there, there's a few more some more information that gets written into the um, the list two, but in general you can now see the how the thing works. Again, in this case. The T is still it works as two processes and those processes are executed independently. So it does still does not know the existence of this particular file list 2. So once we finish the execution that is when it gets written into the, the directory and then that is when we know that actually like okay this file exists and so the subsequent commands will start uh, using the file. Okay, so now we will go into two more commands um, which are quite important uh, because these are the commands that we will use more often in uh, current in, in the current uh, course as well as when we go out in the real world we will be using all these commands uh, in much more details. So the next command is CMP, CMP stands for compare. Uh, this actually compares two files and reports if they are identical and um, it reports the position of the first character. 
the program itself generates a zero output if they are identical otherwise it, it produces a one output and then shows the difference. So the syntax is just CMP file one file two. So So here we give it cmp ex one dot x and ex two dot x. Here it says essentially like I mean differs by differs in byte one and that is line one. So after it executes this, it stops and it comes up comes back to the shell. So again, uh, cmp is another useful tool to understand uh, how to uh, what are the what are the differences between two files and then. Um, how to bridge those differences as well. So we already saw the find the command actually this slide should have gone into the earlier one. Um, and uh, we know that actually it's basically define the path selection criteria essentially the path uh, follow the selection criteria. So um, you can say find dot which means that uh, start from the current directory and then the selection criteria will be the minus name is top dot v. So it looks at uh, looks for the top dot v the current directory and all the way under. And then uh, you can also say like um, um, find dot and then slash type d which is then the type which is a directory and then it, it finds all the directories under the particular under under your current directory. Uh, and uh, anything like uh, dot star uh, as we know the, um, the hidden files start with uh, dot in the as a beginning. So again, like um, when you do the find uh, dot with type f uh, and name is uh, dot star, then it finds all the hidden files as well. Um, again, this all should be followed by also the second item, which is uh, what to do with this data. So like dash print things like that. So, um, so here um, in the home there two. Exam dot text is what we want to find, and then it gives you that uh, basically, and then uh, it also gives you all the things under the home there too, which is uh, the two, the two, the four, the five, six, seven, all the things are printed out. So now um, we come to another important command called the this actually. Um, this is used uh, to uh, get the differences between two files. Uh, so it compares the two files and reports what are the differences. So um, there is a simple diff which is um, um, which basically compares the two files and then displays on a running actually it shows a running display of what are the differences and it tags one file. Um, by less than and then the other file by greater than to distinguish the difference between like those two and then uh, it reports like all the lines which are different. Um, then there are specialized commands um, vim diff file name one file name two or s diff file name one file name two these commands uh, display the um, uh, files side by side. Um, as a part of this uh, BIM diff, you can also have a TK diff, which is uh, using the tickle TK um, interface to create a, a UI so that you can compare those two files. And uh, the good thing about all these commands are um, you can display the 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 differences, and then you can merge the differences. You can merge file A's differences to file B. Or file B's differences to file A in whichever way that you want to go to, and uh, then you can uh, do several other things. Essentially, uh, you can even uh, make both the files exactly the same. Um, 
so basically the difference between a and b whatever is in a will go into b and whatever is in b will go into a things like that um so again uh, this is another powerful command so uh, i want you to use this uh, in real life the diff command is um, often used uh, to find differences between two files uh, either two scripts to run a particular tool uh, or things like that and then um, it also uh, helps us to um, find where what we changed uh, which caused certain issues so um, you can compare the current version with the previous version to see like what changed and so then you can take some corrective actions against it um, or you can go the other way um, like uh, if you see that actually okay they are different then you can say say like okay throw away my old file and then I'll or throw away my new file and I'll use the old file things uh, like that also you will do um, so it's, it's a very helpful command um, and you'll be using it uh, and a lot in the in the real world uh, vim diff again it it shows side by side and uses the um, the editor called the vi um, we will talk about this in the programming context in the next uh, in the next week but uh, there are these uh, editors to edit files uh, one such editor is vim or it's a visual uh, visual editor bi um, there are other editors like emacs is another one probably you must have heard about that um, bi is very common because uh, it has a very fairly easy to understand interface so um, we will like that a lot um, couple of other things that I wanted to highlight are one is for the use of um, tab that you can use tab to complete a particular command uh, or complete a particular file in a particular given file. So this again is um, you do not have to type everything in you know, excruciating and painful way you can um, stop at some point and then let the tool continue and complete that particular work. So that is also provided. Um, I also wanted to briefly touch upon one additional command which is the ln or link. So um, imagine you have a file system and you have a file uh, which runs into like a couple of gigabytes or even more uh, in these days like I mean 50, 100 gigabytes is nothing um, and then now you have a, another directory where a particular program that you want to run and um, which also needs this file as one of the inputs. Now one way to do it is you can just copy that file over to the new location and then uh, this particular file this particular program will access that file and do whatever it wants and then basically uh, it, uh, um, it finishes essentially. Uh, instead of that we can also think of another way where we do not uh, copy the whole file into the new location uh, which can lead to actually like two things one is if you copy the file over to the new location since it is running into like multiple gigabytes probably it will slow the whole system down and uh, it will take a long time for the um, for the particular file to be copied. The second thing that uh, it has is um, basically it eats up those memory like I mean now unnecessarily you, will, you are having like two copies of the same information and as a result you are just occupying the disk space with that and as a result some other uh, important program will not get a chance to, to work because you are blocking the system with uh, your um, um, uh, your jobs. So uh, a better way is to actually link a particular file, um, a linking a file means essentially you are creating um, um, a pointer to that file in that directory so that uh, the program that wants to access can chase that pointer and then go back to that particular file. Um, the links can be created in two ways one is called the hard link and then the other one is called the soft link or the symbolic link. So let us look at what a hard link is. A hard link is um, when we specify uh, the command followed by the target file name and then the link name. 
um, so here both of them are arguments and the first argument is what the link that you want to create and then the second one is uh, what uh, sorry first one is the the file name which you want to create a link for and then the second one is the name of the link that you want to create. So if you specify uh, ln target file name link name then uh, it creates a hard link to target file name or link name. So why what is the why is it called a hard link so the hard link is because even though if you remove the original program the program content still lives under this um, um, this target name or essentially the link name. So if you want to delete a file it is not just enough to delete that particular file name uh, from the file system you also need to delete all the hard uh, link references to that file. So, because otherwise, like, I mean, still keep the data for the link to work, and uh, it will make it work. The other command is ln minus f, and then target name, and then the link name. This creates a soft link or a symbolic link to the particular file name or the target name that you want to associate to. So um, here, if you if you have a soft link and then if you are saying like okay delete my original file then when the next time when you run the program it generates an error saying that hey that particular file is not found even even though like it exists in the symbolic link. So you need to pretty much chase through the symbolic link find out where exactly it is and then add that particular file. But um, the key thing is again um, um, the symbolic link you want the program to fail uh, if it does not find the file. So, again, so that is the reason why uh, a symbolic link is preferred over a hard link in most of the programs. So uh, in this lecture we covered uh, a number of topics um, um, all uh, very important and very useful commands like grab, if grab, locate, unique, sort, uh, touch, diff, uh, t and uh, also like the, the link commands. Um, so I think um, this should give you a good flavor of uh, the entire Linux system. Um, we will be start starting to talk about the, the Linux networking in the next session, um, but um, with this um, actually like I mean we, we cover all the basics of Linux so um, and um, we will also have some more assignments that will be coming your way, um, but uh, we will also do a recap of uh, this lecture in the next one when we start the um, Linux networking. So again thanks a lot. Thank you very much um, uh, and good luck.